Hey, Rob. Good morning. Hey there, Tom. How are you? Oh. I'm all right. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. Not bad for a Friday. Got my coffee. I'm ready to go. Got some new music out today. Yo. Me too. Like <laughs> morning, fellas. Morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Ah, pleasure. Yeah, Thanks for having us. What's happening? Not much. Um, you know, lots to talk about, not a lot of time. You know, first wanted to say, um, had a chance to listen to the new album for the first time last night and had a great time listening to it. Uh, I think uh, one of the first things I noted is that, uh, you know, this compilation, it's got a lot of energy to it right out the gate. Like I put on my headphones and like the opening track, Alan, it's got you on it, Natural Soul, uh, Matt Schofield, uh, Darby yeah. Wolf, Pete. Yeah. Uh, I felt like I was launched right back into Brooklyn Bowl immediately with that big funky. Uh -huh. uh, it was it was such a fantastic like nostalgic moment, even if just for you know three four minutes at first. Uh, Alan, I know uh, you mixed all of the tracks on this album. Uh, was there any sonic vision that you had to keep the listener engaged from start to finish? You know, did you want to uh, establish any kind of uniformity throughout, especially you know when you are dealing with so many different performers and, and different styles on one project? You know what? Actually, I didn't think about that at all, to be honest. Uh, my, my, just my whole philosophy of production, recording, and mixing is let the, uh, if we're speaking of, if, say if I'm just working with a band, I just want them to shine. I want, I'm not trying to add anything. I'm just trying to make the song, the artist, the band, whatever, shine. So I just take that philosophy in, in, into, into this album, um, knowing that also it was, it's a compilation of, you know, things are uh, different bands and different songs. I mean, it's almost, uh, it, I found it to, it, it would be almost impossible to even look at it that way. So for me, it was just about putting together um, some really great songs that best represent the label and what we're doing. And then, and just, uh, I guess, hope for the best. <laughs> totally, and I mean, I think you succeeded, you know, and just in terms of, uh, you know, putting all these pieces together and really make it work as, you know, just a you know, great consistently flowing uh, listening experience. Uh, were, were any of these recordings, uh, now these, you know, all these songs, fans aren't going to be able to hear anywhere else except for this album. You know, were these recordings or these songs uh, recorded specifically for this project or were, had any of them already been pre-existing and you guys, you know, just needed a good home for them? Hmm. I don't know. I, I'd say probably, well, there's a, like the, <laughs> uh, my Crush Velvet song, for instance, that was recorded, oh, wow over 10 years ago, probably, Whoa. I guess, the one with me and Neil. Yeah, so, and that was just something that I, I always wanted to put out, and it was just, I'd just kind of forgotten about it. Yeah. But other tunes were, I'd say, more definitely in thinking of this album. Um, I would say right I think right the majority, now, I mean, weren't they? Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty right. sure maybe it was like a couple from the archives or from you know other projects, but the, yeah, most of them were recorded, especially for the album. You know, we we pitched the idea around to everybody and said, "Look, it's just going to be on on this album. Are you cool with that?" And everyone's like, "Yeah, sign us up." So we're really happy with that. And you know, this concept of it being a compilation, but it's all new music. You're not going to be able to get it anywhere else. We thought this is something that we wanted to do to you know celebrate Vintage League. You know, at the end of the year and the artists on it and some of the collaborators and that. So that, that was the idea behind it and everybody kind of jumped on it. So we were really happy with the level of enthusiasm, to be honest. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. All, all, of those, all of those tunes could have ended up on, on all the individual artists' albums. Right, yeah. But, you know, when, when Rob and I started thinking about this, you know, that was actually one... Uh, we were hoping that everyone would want to contribute something to it. And we let them know like, yo, this is, this song is going to be on this album. You know what I mean? Like, and, uh, and, and nowhere else just to, and I, I, and we both thought that was just it's something unique. I mean, a lot of compilation albums are, you know, kind of greatest hits uh, uh, kind of things, if you will, you know what I mean? 
Um, so yeah, we were really lucky that everyone was just was was down for the cause. Very cool. And you know, because there are so many different contributions, uh, you, you know, Alan, you were kind of in charge of generally overseeing everything. Uh, and you know, not that I'm explaining it to you, but you know, being a producer is always such a loose term. You know, with each project or each recording. You know, for, so for example, what did what did that job title entail for you this time around? Well, I mean, I guess a lot of it, I mean, a lot of it for, for both Rob and I is just a, a time management. That's like, the, the, that was the biggest thing because we're dealing with a lot of the different artists and we're saying, hey, we, we have to hit this deadline in order to, you know, get this, get this thing out on time um, or when we wanted to release it. Honestly, that was probably the, I wouldn't say it was challenging but it was definitely a lot on my plate at when in the whole production of this, you know, cause I'm, I'm and as well as dealing with this album and everybody involved, I'm also dealing with everything else going on here in the studio. That's not vintage league music related or, you know, other, uh, and on top of that, other things, other releases that we have in terms of vintage league music. So yeah, it was a lot of juggling, um, but it, it it was well, well worth it. So, um, but yeah, I'd say the, 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 the biggest issue was just time management, making sure everybody was always, you know, uh, producing things on the right time at the right time. Cause obviously, you know, de also dealing with making this during the pandemic lockdown, it's not like I had a lot of people just coming through the studio and like, okay, that tune is done. Okay. Well, next, next, next band. I'm waiting for, you know, in terms of like the big band, you know what I mean? Like that's like 19 piece band, you know? So yeah. you're waiting, making sure everybody's parts coming in times, however many other tunes, you know, uh, on the album. And then also just making sure that I'm just, just staying super organized, making sure everyone has the latest mixes that they need to work from and, and, and being an artist myself on it. So yeah, what was I thinking? <laughs> that, that the world needs more good music at this time. That's what, hopefully yeah. that's what you're thinking. Uh, yeah, I mean, you mentioned the big yeah, no band. No doubt, no doubt. You mentioned the big band. Yeah, that's like 18, 19 people. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Did they record all those parts during quarantine, like in a remote setting, or had a lot of those already been tracked? Or, you know, for that track, you know, what was the deal with those guys? No, man, that, that, that tune started uh, with bass and drums being recorded in Boston. From there, uh, that went, the, the tune came to me. I got a, a tracking mix together, um, sent it off to uh, John, you know, Medeski. He recorded, then I think guitars came on after that, then all the horns started coming in. So yeah, it was literally like piece after piece, literally, like I'd get trombone, you know, or trumpet, you know, four, trumpet three, trumpet, you know, and, and every day it was like something else. Yeah. And then I'm just building. I'm, so basically the, how I do that, pro, uh, work that process, and this has been the same with the big band since we've been uh, working on tunes uh, in quarantine, I get each, each part and I basically just start mixing. So by the time, pretty much by the time I get the last part from somebody, which is usually the percussion, I guess, you know, in their case, the tune is pretty much mixed and, and ready to roll, uh, you know, barring very little, you know, some little changes from the band leader's notes. But uh, yeah, pretty, pretty wild. Uh, no, I mean, on a project like this, it's a question for both of you. You know, when you're uh, a project like this, or I guess any, you know, kind of project that you guys are overseeing, uh, do you both prefer to be hands on, like, you know, consistently in the studio with the artists or at least checking in? you know, throughout the process? Or did you find that you were able to transition to being pretty hands off and just, you know, waiting for things to come in until you get a chance to, uh, you know, contribute and have a say on things? I think we were fairly hands off. I mean, obviously you assembled everything, Al. So, but, um, you know, I think like as we had to, we had to be pretty clear up front on the deadlines just to get everything together and when we need everything done by. And so we had to manage that uh, a little bit hands on. But, um, uh, you know, I think mostly people 
it wasn't too much of a hassle, was it? I mean, people were pretty pretty good about getting stuff to you. You had a lot to do to pull mixes together and stuff. Um, but apart from that, I think people were pretty pretty good. You know, we didn't need to be chasing everyone too much. Yeah. Nice. Uh, no, I mean, the, 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 the really cool thing about it is that once I got like a, a good mix going and sent off to people, whoever needed the overdub, um, they were excited by the song and how it was sounding. So everyone was, was really enthusiastic about just, you know, jumping right on it. You know, like it was literally, we didn't, we didn't have to chase anyone down at all. So, um, so that, was, that, was, that was really good, you know. Yeah. Uh, and Alan, you sing on the song here with me, uh, which was just shared yesterday, I believe, or at midnight tonight, whenever it was, as a, one of the pre-release singles. Uh, you know, and it's one of the occasional recordings on this album that has a vocal track on it too. You know, I thought it was kind of fun uh, to hear you sing about, you know, from the, the narrator's perspective uh, on that track about wanting to get up close and cozy with someone else. You know, I almost forgot what that desire feels like in these weird times, you know, uh, with everyone making yeah. a point not to do that. You know, was, uh, was that kind of the point that you were trying to get across in that song? Like, hey, you know, remember that feeling that we used to have, like wanting to get you know, write up and intimate with someone? Well, you know, it's funny. That, that is another tune that uh, Rob and I had been planning on releasing for a while. And it, and it didn't quite have a home. And, I had, I, and, and one of the reasons was I had to change the title of the song, and, and which was in the chorus of the song. I'm not going to say what the title was, but trust me i had the i uh, it was written before a certain time and then i was like man i gotta change this title so i changed it and, I make it and it's it's really interesting what yeah 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 but you know what man it, that's really interesting that uh, uh interesting um perspective you have on it i mean honestly like the the tune for me is wow it i guess I guess that's what I, I'd hope a good song does when I listen to a, a good song. You know, like you can grab different meanings from it. Initially, it was kind of like, you know, it's like a, a, a love song, you know what I mean? But I think in, this, in the times that we're in now, it definitely speaks to uh, people uh, m maybe missing and really uh, needing and, um, and having a yeah, I guess a longing for that, that physical co connection, you know, with, with one another, you know, so, um, and, and I, I know that we're, we're going to get, we're going to get to it, to it really soon. So, but man, that, that's, that, you know what, man, that's awesome. I didn't even think about that, but now that, now I'm listening to the tune in my head, man, that's, that's pretty, that's beautiful. Wow. But see, that's the thing that with, with, with songs, when, when I, I always, I, I talk about my songwriting and how I approach it and a lot of tunes, man, all this preparation, when you're, you're practicing, you're playing, you're, you know, come in, you're playing your guitar or whatever, whatever and, you're, and all that is just life in general, living, you know, for me, is all in preparation for trying to be prepared for when, it, when a song just comes to me. And I'm just, I can be in the moment and, and I don't feel like I wrote that song. It was already there. I just I just happen to be in the right place at the right time to 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 receive it. I guess you would call. Yeah. So with that said, it's interesting, man. Like a lot of things. I like I said, I wrote that tune what a couple years ago, maybe something like that. A year last year, a couple years ago. Yeah. And it and 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 something in it speaks to to what's going on right now. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm always I'm always grateful for for those experiences. You know, be able to just write tunes and. Uh, and, and put them out in the world. Oh, hey, well, it's, uh, it's just reciprocated. It's, I'm, I was equally grateful to hear it, for sure. Uh, okay. And I really loved wow. how uh, the back half, or the second half of, the, of this album, really does a great job of bringing the listener back down to earth. You know, a lot of, this, uh, a lot of the tracks and a lot of the songs in the first half, a lot of high energy, a lot, you know, a lot, a lot of, you know, different musicians firing on all different cylinders. But, you know, towards the latter half, you have Johnny Trauma and the B3 Kings mm -hmm. with Jesse D doing Helping Hand, which is this warm, soulful, feel-good ballad. And then you have uh, Brother Good Love's A Little Bit of Sunshine, and he's singing out lyrics like, you know, the soul of our nation is up for sale. 
And, uh, you know, these days are getting short, the light is getting colder, you know, and all I need is a little sunshine to ease my mind. You know, hearing him sing that, it felt like, you know, he was singing right into my cold heart right now. Yeah. It, it, those were, you know, two fantastic tracks to yeah, wrap things up and send listeners off on an optimistic note. You know, when you guys right. listen to the album, you know, after it was mixed and mastered and you're listening to it all the way through, did you guys get that same vibe? Like, yeah, these, these last couple tracks are really good. You know, they're, they're, they're warming and kind of, you know, like I said, bringing everyone back down to earth a little bit, but they're certainly not boring by any means. You know, it's still certainly yeah. engaging. Was that the same kind of reaction you guys had when you were putting the track list order together? I mean, I did, yeah, and that's great observation, and thanks for that, Tom. I mean, it's, uh, it's great you picked up on that. I mean, it felt like that to me as well. I, when I got the um, when I got the test press and the vinyl, I put it on, and I kind of had the same feeling, like, you know, the first side in particular, it's like, you know, really high energy, and then by the, by the time we get to the end, you know, that kind of mellow vibe just to take you out, you know, and uh, it, it, felt, it felt like really, really well sequenced. I, I was really happy with how it came out, to be honest. And that, Al, you sequenced it, so all credit to you on that. Oh man, thanks, man. Well, you know, again, I was just lucky to have um, everyone contributing some really great, uh, great music, and and uh, and for me, I'm like I'm an old school cat in terms of, especially in terms of, of record making. You know, like um, it's it's all about. For me, it's like uh, it's like making a film or uh, you know a really good or show or whatever it's like it, there's an arc you know and uh and i feel like the even though it's a compilation album i feel that the whole thing works together in telling a story or at least helping the listener i i wouldn't say telling a story but i like the idea of the listener being able to create their store their own story it's like it's a soundtrack to like a movie of your mind and that's that's why i love about making albums it's like creating something that can be used to, to create your uh, the listener create their own experience you know their own kind of visual sonic you know experience so yeah man it, we uh we we put the work in and uh, a lot of it yeah, a lot of it was work and a lot of it was just I guess luck, you know, and, and how it, it just played out. So I uh, was really happy with it. I mean, and that's the thing, like Rob said, when I, when I got the test pressing, oh man. Yeah. I was like, yep, there it is, man. That's, that's the story. That's the story. So. Yeah. Right. We'll have to send you a copy of the vinyl cause um, we'll have it very shortly. We'll send you a copy if you like, Tom. I, I would love that. Yeah. Actually. We're really happy with the pressing. It sounds great. Really, really nice. Yeah. And, um, you know, quick question. I know uh, the digital version is out December 17th. Is the vinyl due out the same day or is that uh, release date a little bit longer, a little bit further in the future? Yeah, we're, we're on track for that. Yeah, it's been, um, you know, it's been, been a bit tricky with the, with the pressing plants with all that's been going on, but uh, uh, we're going to have it uh, uh, ready to go out on the 17th. So right on. pre-orders open now. We're really happy. We've had a lot of a lot of pre-orders, which is always great to see, you know. Um, and then, uh, yeah, vinyl will be out the same day. Fantastic. And just in time for the holiday shopping season? Perfect. That's what we're trying to do. There you go. <laughs> uh, you know, now that, speaking of the holiday season, I mean, now that 2020 is really coming to an end, uh, now that we can kind of look back in retrospect, uh, you know, there's certainly a lot to talk about, uh, you know, with everything that uh, the live music community lost this year in terms of, you know, not being able to, you know, for me, you know, speaking personally, not being able to be at Brooklyn Bowl like every other weekend mm -hmm. and, and being around my family and all the artists that are coming through town, you know, uh, and I'm sure I speak for a lot of other people who weren't able to be at their favorite venues or their favorite festivals that they like to attend every year, you know, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, you know, but that, were there any albums uh, that did get, did get released this year uh, that caught your guys' ear, you know, even dating back to before the pandemic and everything, you know, were there any releases that really spoke to you that, you think fan, whether it be on a uh, vintage league music's roster or you heard anywhere else that you think fans should really make a note of listening to, uh, to, you know, consider this year not being a total loss, you know, in terms of new music and new music experiences. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, on, on just to start with the VLM stuff, yeah, we had, um, we had a release come out just, <laughs> unfortunately, just as the pandemic kind of was kicking in at the album release. And then like two weeks later, bam, which was the, uh, Actually, the band I'm in, the Crowd Company Lowdown album. So that was a vinyl 
digital release that we put out in March. We were really happy. We recorded that actually at Al Studio. We're really happy with how that came out. We got some great reviews from that, so we're really happy about that. Um, and then we put out a couple of 45s. I don't know if you've seen those. One was um, actually BT ALC band on that, and uh, a band called Agent Three on the flip. That's um, the iguana that, that that came out. We put out another 45. We, we really experimented with the seven inch singles this year for the first time and uh, really pleased that people seem to really be into them. So we put out this other one uh, early in the year, which was um, Alan Evans Trio and uh, Crowd Company double A side. And that got really, really great reviews as well. So we're happy with that. So we're pleased with those on the VLM side, I'd say. Um, what about other other records, Al? Do you want to start anything that you, struck you? Man, you know, there was one record that came out and I'm trying to remember when it when exactly came out. I believe it was pre-pandemic uh, lockdown or whatever, but I could be wrong. Everyone could whatever look it up. But um, it was a uh, Mac uh, Mac Miller's um, new album that yeah, came the, out. Yeah, the the posthumous one back in the, the spring, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yo, yo, that album. It, Still, I, I haven't listened to it in a little while, and I can guarantee you I'm going to listen to it on my drive home from the studio today. That album knocked me uh, knocked me out, man. Just be beautiful, beautiful songwriting, man. Just just heart, like heartfelt um, performance and uh, just every, everything. I loved everything about it, man. You know, and it was just one of those things, man, where it... it for for me, it just reminded me of um, just appreciating the moment, you know, appreciating what I have, because that dude had so like he had so much more to to, to do, you know. Yeah. And we, you know, and uh, so it's just for me, it's just like man, appreciate the moment, appreciate the people that you have around you. Absolutely. And uh, and just and 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 keep making music, keep listening to music, keep supporting musicians and artists um because uh we all you know we we all need this need it together you know so that's one out that, I'll just, that's one album that like really really did it for me man really dig it yeah i i i don't know if you if you check this out this i think this may have come out just again it's all a blur time isn't it it's either during pandemic or just before it's the uh, adam deitch quartet album. yes yeah I mean, that's great. There's some great playing on that with John Schofield and stuff. So I, I was really, really had that on the turntable for a few weeks. You know, I was really into that. Nice. Um, yeah, that was a cool one. Yeah, there's some good music still. I mean, that's the great thing is the, obviously the live music scene has been decimated for this period of time, which has been like beyond tragic. Um, but people are still putting music out. And um, thankfully, um, even in the era of streamed, music you know people are still buying you know vinyl you know products which is a lifeline for labels like ours and musicians you know because without you know without gigs and you know the, the uh you know the, the the pittance you get paid on streaming services you know it's it's very difficult for for musicians and, and labels right now so it, you know we've actually seen i don't know whether it's because there's people at home and just looking for entertainment at home, but we I think we've been selling probably more vinyl than we normally would have done actually during Yeah. Yeah. Just that and I buy and sell a bit of vinyl outside of the label and I notice that's taken off as well. So people still seem to be buying music, which is thankful. You know, thankful. No, absolutely. You know, people are I think they're you know, even on a year, let's say, where vinyl sales or physical sales may be down, I think people you know, we're really willing to spend, you know, the few extra bucks to have, you know, that sense of, you know, just sonic relief for a couple hours. You know, I think uh, me speaking personally, uh, I really put more an emotional investment into seeing and experiencing music in a live setting. Not that I don't appreciate right. recorded music, but I think this year, you know, I was really forced to, you know, put all my emotional cards into, you know, Spotify mixtapes and, you know, my own vinyl collection and, you yeah. know, that, what other escape did you really have? So I think, you know, this year yeah. really put an emphasis on, hey, there, you know, it may not show it in terms of the royalty rates, the, you know, these days or, you know, what have you, but there's still lots of value in recorded music. It, it shouldn't be considered really? as disposable as, 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 uh, as parts of society may deem it. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, exactly. and I mean, and the and the way I look at it, man, it's like a, a lot of you know a lot of artists right now. Again, obviously, aren't are on the road, aren't playing. You know, but we are all, or a lot of us, are writing and recording, which means, man, when we when when things get start opening up and we're able to play live we're gonna there's gonna be a lot of great music happening you know people are you know people are gonna be excited to play their new music people are gonna be excited to listen to that new music you know so um yeah man that we're you know we're not just sitting around just w waiting you know we're, we're we're doing and and just getting ready for you know the next step so yeah do you think uh i mean this is volume one so i'm assuming just by namesake there's going to be volume twos and threes and, and so on going forward, you know, in an ideal world uh, where we could have had a show, can you guys have seen with the release of this album doing at least getting maybe at least half of the roster on the album together to have done an album release show to go with it? Is that something that you guys would like to do for volume two and three where you can make a show out of? Oh yeah. It? Yeah. We have, we, we, we've been taught, we've actually been talking about it quite a bit actually and the goal is most certainly to uh put as many if not all the artists together for some shows um and my vision actually or one of the visions of it is to not only just have each band play their songs kind of like in the the old school review like a motown live review or whatever yeah. but i really want i i really envision uh, a, a lot of collaboration on stage, you know what I mean? So it's not like, oh, this band and then we leave and then the next band comes on like, hey, bring all the horns out for these tunes, you know, like have all everyone singing on everyone else's songs, everyone playing. So um, that that's uh, that's what I'm really hoping will, will happen. We're, we're gonna make it happen. And we're definitely, uh, Good. we're gonna have Good. volume two, volume three. Yeah, it, it, this is gonna be, be a, a thing for us for sure. Yep. Good. That's that's wonderful news for us to hear, for sure. Especially with it looks it looks like there may be a very good possibility that shows will return uh, in some capacity by you know late next summer, mid next summer. So that that's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, you know, yeah. I don't want to keep you guys here too long. Again, you know, you know, speak for myself and you know everyone who's going to see this. Uh, you know, thank you so much for this this music project because it's a, it's certainly a great. Uh, you know, kind of like a great, you know, this whole mixtape compilation you guys have going. It's certainly a great stamp at the end of what's been a, a year where there have been some great releases, but also, you know, bad news after bad news. It was a really fun listening experience for sure. Uh, and uh, I guess yeah. something to send, uh, send things off with here. Uh, you know, are there any interesting projects coming from the Vintage League music family that fans should make a note to look forward to in 2021? Well, yeah. Actually, oh, yeah. We, we, pr we pretty much we pretty much have twenty twenty one all spoken for in terms of releases already. I mean, I can kind of look. Oh, there, there's a couple. Okay, yeah. So I have my Crush Velvet album that's coming out uh, in uh, early next year. We have a new Alan Evans Trio album coming out. We have a working on a Brother Good Love album, Crowd Company, uh, On the Spot Trio, OTS. Uh, we're working out. We're starting to work on a BT uh, ALC big band album. Uh, what else? And but there's a, we have a some we have a, two releases that are going to be really big. And it, there, I can't. We can't. I wish I could tell you who it is, but trust me, people people just don't we'll even. Know, we'll, I don't we, even know. We can people tell you first ready, when we're ready. We yeah, can't tell you this yet, but yeah, yeah, early January we'll we'll announce it and we can ping you. But it's pretty pretty huge to be quite honest. Um, that 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 they're, they're ready, so they're actually mixed and mastered. Um, we just kind of line up a couple of things. So nice. I, you know, I think you're gonna dig it. I think you're gonna dig it, Tom. <laughs> no, as long as we know there's you know there are a lot of cool things coming down the pipe. I I think we can wait a little bit longer to know what it is. But yeah, uh, great. Alan, Robert, guys, thank you so much for your time today. And thank you for, you know, for putting this together. You know, I really did enjoy listening to it. You know, I, winter is not for me. So, you know, any chance, <laughs> I can, any chance I can get to just throw on my headphones, just like zone out for an hour, it's always, you know, a, for me, just a great escape. And I'm sure, you know, I'm speaking for a lot of people who are, are going to hear this album. So thanks. Thanks you guys so much for again for your time. Uh, and, so and, and putting this together. Thank you so much, Tom. 
Yeah, thank you, Tom. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah, but best yeah. of luck. Have yeah. a good good holiday season, you guys. And I hope, uh, Alan, I hope to see you back on stage early next year, you know, at some point and as much possible going forward. Yes, indeed. You will. You will.